You're recording? Yeah, no, All right. Good. Hey, what's up, guys? Peter is holding a gimbal. It's the Smooth Q. This is the first time we've used it, so bear with us. He's going to try to follow me around. And I'll just show you some things on the outside of the barn here in the welding studio uh, and a few other things. And then I'll go upstairs to the art studio and show you what's going on up there. So this is the welding cabinet. You might remember uh, me making this last year. <laughs> it's got very few views. I was surprised. Uh, Basically, right now, I've got a welding tip on this torch, so it's not a cutting tip. And with this, I'm going to post a video, hopefully in the next week or two, where we do some oxyacetylene welding. And there you just basically use a regular old coat hanger, and you uh, get both metals to a molten state, and you basically weave the metal together. The oxygen gets regulated to about five or seven degrees and the same thing with the acetylene. So this is the, uh, the welding tank. You can see I've got my glasses in here and it's great. I haven't used it too much, but I do plan on using it. I got a little science project over here. You guys know I'm kind of crazy about my lawn. It's kind of one of those things I think you do when you get older in life. I don't know why, but for whatever reason, I'm into my lawn now. So this, is a mixture of grass seed and sawdust. This is right out of the bottom of the table saw. And I've got about three pounds of grass seed in here. I've mixed it up. And what I'm doing is letting the grass seed germinate. And that seems to be the, the hardest thing to get grass seed to do is to germinate. This is something I've been doing now for maybe, I don't know, four or five years and it works really good. Uh, probably post a video on it where I mix in maybe two or three shovels of this sawdust grass seed mixture with topsoil and then I go around and I fix the bald spots in the yard. The idea with the, I think why I'm a little crazy about the yard is I want to turn this into a kind of a sculpture garden at some point. If uh, you don't know anything about sculpture gardens, you could do a Google search of Storm King, that's in New York State and Grounds for Sculpture, which is right here in New Jersey. Check them out. So now we'll go upstairs. I did kind of want to look at the garden, but let's go up into the art studio. So right now I'm working on a possible commission. And I say possible commission because art is it's visual and often you have to get the conversation started for a commission. And this happens to be a client who owns a few of my paintings. And by making these studies, it makes it possible to convey an idea. If I do get the commission, it will probably white, a painting that's white on white. It'll be a painting that's kind of similar to this green one here, surrounded with blocks of white color. Um, I think it's gonna look really cool in the space if I get the commission and it all happens, I'll show you what it looks like. But anyway, you might be looking at these and thinking, what do you mean, they're just blocks of color? Uh, well, it's, um, it definitely ties back to art history. You could think of artists like Ellsworth Kelly or Pete Mondrian. And what I, what a lot of my artwork is about the architectural connection between materials. So here I'm creating a vessel. This is going to get filled with wax and basically I'm making a grid. So I feel like it's true to me. It's something that I like. It makes a kind of a nice conversation. If you're wondering, um, if you saw my Patreon video last week where I was kind of talking about how I don't believe in the art world because of artists like Damien Hirst, the reason why I'm not a big Damien Hirst fan is not that I, I don't like his polka dot paintings, they're kind of cool, but he doesn't paint them. He has assistants all over the world painting his paintings. So his hand is never really involved in the work and making something there's always this learning curve, right? So if you want to make something, it never turns out exactly the way you think it's going to turn out, but you learn something along the way and you apply that knowledge to the next thing. So if you have assistance making all of your work, you never have that, that sort of graduated knowledge. So that's why I have uh, something against artists who don't make their own work and they just rely on assistance. Over here is a study. This was something that I just wanted to see these different color patterns. And again, I was working with the same client for this. 
This is a painting that is, I don't know if you can see it. This is um, it's a famous photograph for, by Robert Kappa. Robert Kappa. Uh, he was a war photographer. And the image is Death of a Loyalist Soldier. So it's one of those things like if you see it, you see it. If you don't, you don't. And once you do see it, you do see it. Um, over here, this is another <clears throat> uh, color field painting. If you don't know the term color field paintings, uh, you can think of artists like Mark Rothko as a color field painter. Um, Barnett Newman is a color field painter. Um, that's just something, it's a field of color. It's really as simple as that. So that's what's going on up here in the studio. Let's get a shot of that, Peter. This is all of my encaustic uh, materials. So this is a color, this is yellow color. This is a one pound cake of filtered beeswax. It's filtered, you can see it's translucent. This is unfiltered beeswax, and you can see it's, it has that, uh, the pigment of, there's all little bits of pollen and probably parts of bees in here, just microscopic pieces that give the, the wax this tan yellow hue, where this is translucent. You mix the beeswax with, uh, this is, you can't really see it, but this is Damar crystals, which is sap from a, a fir tree, I think in India. And you mix that up with the wax and some pigment, and that's how you make your color. Want to take a look at the garden? Cool. Yeah. Here's the planter. I think my wife's going to plant this today. Take a shot in here. This is the, uh, not, maybe people didn't stay to the end of the video. But anyway, the bottom of the planter is just cedar boards. And then I'll, that will get a, uh, a garden fabric over it. So this should be... Today's Friday, so I do plan on planting it this weekend. And then over here at the garden, I've got big plans for the garden. Probably a fall project. I'm going to make a deck here. Uh, maybe 12 feet by 16 feet. Probably two or four more planters. And that way they'll be on top of a, a wooden deck, which I think will look really nice and I'll probably bring water over and have a spigot here so I can water the garden and wash the vegetables and things like that. Here's the bees. Wow, look at all the bees are really out today. This hive, people always ask me, aren't, aren't you worried about getting stung? I'm not that worried about getting stung because I'm not messing around with the bees. If I was going into the hive and um, disturbing it, well then they might get angry and, and sting me uh, but for the most part if you're not messing with them they're, they're probably not going to mess with you but both hives are doing good I've got two laying queens and uh, I hope to get some honey this fall in case you don't follow me on Instagram I'm putting another two or three coats on the countertop and I made this little tent just to keep the bugs and the leaves off of it